Hey guys, been playing with the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module of course. Uh, that's that guy over here if you haven't seen the other videos. And uh, this video is all going to be more about this program that I wrote called Lua Uploader. And the reason it exists is because there is no such thing as a nice IDE for it. And you are supposed to simply use a terminal program and send your commands, you know, using the terminal program, typing it one line at a time, or you, you could actually, uh, you could send multiple lines, but because the ESP is not that fast, you actually have to put a delay. And I found this program. Um, somebody told me, I think it was Peter Scargill who brought this one up. Um, anyway, it's a terminal program that has a delay. That was a vast improvement over the other terminal delay like real term or putty where you have to type slowly one line at a time but with this I've I think I've taken it a step further so let's just download it I thought it'd be easier to show you rather than write documentation so unzip it And it's a pretty small program. There's no, no, you, there's nothing to install. You just launch this when you got it. Okay. So before I actually explain the program, let me just show you uh, uh, something that it can do. Let's go get some snippets of code. This is not an actual code. They are just pieces of code snippets that I uh, u used to uh, as I was learning. So Lua has two dashes to indicate comment. And to declare a variable, you just say what it is. A is a variable. You can make that a string or a number, it doesn't matter. And then uh, to execute this, this is something new that I did. It's like whatever you selected, so you don't have to have the whole thing or type it one at a time. You can just select whatever you want. So I could, if I go do this, execute that. Oops, I don't have the right port. So let's make sure we have on the right port. Um, so execute that okay so it says a now if I try to print C it doesn't exist yet so it should say hey that's nil but if I execute these extra lines now it should know yeah, it's like the a was up here the B is down here the expression is down here when I print C it knows it's three so you can learn an experiment with this uh, one line at a time like this you know like well and then I find out that I could get tired of clicking that button so I put a shortcut which is alt X so no matter where you are you just say alt X it's really handy um, so that's the gist of what the basics is like, like when you're learning but you can also load uh, a file a Lua file onto the ESP itself for later so you can run it without having actually having the this program without having to have the PC anymore so let me show you that so I cleared it so we'll go load something from my hard disk let's load that blinker program oh before I do that this is kind of cool we could actually just do a blink manually by hand too so we say the pin is pin 9 need to make that a little bit easier to read so you can say pin 9 is going to be an output pin I'll do an alt X there it does it and the way I set up my wiring is if we, if we bring that pin down to ground it, the, the LED is connected to, to the uh, cathode of the LED is connected to this pin and the anode the positive side of the LED is connected to a resistor and a plus so when we do that it's actually turned on and you could actually turn it off by doing that I thought it was pretty cool that you have an interactive Arduino kind of uh, except there's no Arduino. There's just the three dollar Wi-Fi chip. Anyway, so back to uh, loading stuff. So I could actually load something from disk, like uh, let the blink in here. And you know, you can write this on a notepad, or you can write right here, and blah 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 blah. You know, and then uh, when you're ready to, well, you you could try this first. You could say now save it, and then after you save it, run it. So you can do this, and it will not actually run it. It's simply, simply to uh, write a file to disk. You have to write to open the file on the ESP, and you write line every single line of code that you want, which was very tedious if you didn't have this program. <laughs> so by the time you're done, you have this file. And if I show you the list of 
files, I now we, we have several of these files, including that blink. And uh, while we're here, I'm going to show you the delete. So whatever the file name is in here, these guys will uh, will use. So it will save it as that file name. It will run it as that file name, uh, and it will delete it as that file name. So now we we'll remove that file name. So if we do another file list, the uh, blink is no longer there. So anyway, so let's do this one, where now when not only it will save it, but after it gets done saving, it will actually execute that. That's that last line right there. And that's why it's blinking over there on the uh, on the actual uh, ESP. Let's see. I've talked about this. So this one saves it to disk. Oh yeah, so whatever you type in here, you can, right now it's not it's been saved to disk yet. But if you do this, you'll say where do you want to save it, and you can save it on disk. So this one is a blink. I'll save it as a blink again. Well, actually, I put garbage out. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then you can reload it later, and then you could save it to the ESP, load it from the. This one, this is the only one that is not quite done yet. I have not quite figured this out. So if I go over here and I say, um, load it. What I want to do is actually replace this whole thing with what was loaded. So if I, so garbage there, and I say load it, it actually loads it right here. You could see the actual code right there so you're gonna have to actually copy and paste it here and start working on it I have not quite figured out how to find the beginning and ending and move it over and stuff like that yeah but that's a small inconvenient that usually you probably have it on your uh, PC anyway so this is not really a, a, a deal breaker uh, execute selection okay so we've talked about that and this is an older one that I don't know it's probably not that useful anymore since we could actually just select what we want but before I did that, implement that, you basically type what you want to type, what you want to execute, and you click, press this. So this is basically what, it, instead of doing a selection, it will execute everything that is in this uh, text box. And this one is such that you, if you don't want to do, go through here, load it from disk, and do all that stuff, you could also go over here and say, okay, let's go clear this, see the file list. I'm going to kill the blink again. That's the blink. Delete it. Okay, so there's no more blink. So now if we go over to this tab, and all you want, you're not writing code or anything, so all you want is to actually just take the blink that is on the hard drive, and you're actually going to upload it to the ESP. It will do exactly the same thing, except it's coming from the disk rather can, than coming from this text box. I think the last thing to talk about is, yeah, we can restart it. So if I restart it, it should stop blinking. Yep. Now it's ready to take commands again. Um, and then this is, should be obvious what COM port is the ESP is connected to through the FTDI, what speed you have it at. And then this is what, as like I said, <laughs> this is the main reason this program exists is because it cannot, you can't simply paste this. Yeah. It's kind of handy to have the, all this stuff and being able to uh, execute what you select. I think that's everything. If you got any questions or any suggestions of what, what else uh, would be useful to have in this program, I'd be very interested. Uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.